Don't use Windows built-in image backup. Hi everyone, Leo Notenboom here for AskLeo.com. If you're not a subscriber to my weekly Confident Computing newsletter, head out to newsletter.askleo.com and sign up today. Weekly tips, tricks, answers, and admonitions like today's in your inbox every week. Here's the question I got. You keep saying that I should not use the backup software built into Windows. Why not? Why shouldn't I use it if it's already built in? Well, there are a couple of things going on here, but first, the very first thing we need to do is make sure we're talking about the same thing. Because in reality of late, Windows includes several different things that could be considered backup. Specifically, there is a tool in Windows 10 and 11 called, ironically, the Windows 7 Backup and Restore. That's the image backup program that's built into Windows. That is what we are going to be talking about today. There's also something called file history. That is a real-time-ish backup that will actually back up files as they change to an external drive. That's not what I'm talking about today. That's a fine tool to make part of your backup strategy. And of course, there's OneDrive and what I'll call an assortment of fairly confusing OneDrive settings that can also be, as I often refer to it, an important part of a well-balanced backup diet. But what we're really talking about here is the Windows 7 Backup and Restore. Now, without getting into specifics about why you shouldn't use it at the technical side, the number one reason you shouldn't be using it is Microsoft said so. They now recommend that you not use the built-in backup and restore functionality in Windows. And in fact, have in the past suggested that instead you need to use a third-party tool. Now, of course, we've talked a lot about third-party tools here at Ask Leo, where we talk about things like Macrium Reflect or ESIS To Do or any of several other tools. But the bottom line here is that even Microsoft has said this is a tool that you should probably stop using. It's still there so that you can read old backups and if you need to, I suppose, create new ones. But the bottom line here is that Microsoft themselves is suggesting that you no longer use this tool and they have, I'll even say, threatened to completely remove the tool from future versions of Windows. Now, why at a technical level though, why isn't it being supported? They stopped supporting it. They stopped making any changes to it since Windows 7. And in fact, that's why in the user interface, you'll see it referred to as the Windows 7 Backup and Restore tool. Well, I don't know why they haven't continued it. I would make a lot of sense for them to actually have a backup program built into Windows that was robust, but it's not. Honestly, Backup in Windows has had a very, very shaky history. The backup that was included in Windows 7 is what I would consider to be the first instance of a bare minimum backup program that I would have been willing to rely on. Now that they're no longer supporting it, of course, the point is moot. I'm no longer willing to rely on it anyway. The problem is, though, it actually had some issues. It was never really a good complete solution for backing up. To be clear, the several problems I had with it include, it was almost impossible to tell what it was actually doing. It doesn't support incremental or differential backups. Its scheduling options were extremely, extremely limited. Given that there are so many alternatives, like I said, ESIS to do has a free version you can use. Macrium Reflect has been something that I've been talking about for a very long time. There are dozens of other good backup solutions out there. There really is no reason to rely on what is now called the Windows 7 Backup and Restore in Windows 10 and Windows 11. Even Microsoft has suggested that you move to a third party tool for that type of image backup. So, what do you do? Well, Invest in an alternative. The paid version of Macrium Reflect is a great program. If you don't want to pay, 
Eases To Do has a free version that is quite, quite good. There are other alternatives, as I mentioned. Perform daily backups. A full image once a month and incrementals daily is the default plan that I tend to recommend for most people. Enable file history. File history is actually pretty cool and is one of those things that will back up files in more or less real time as you're working on them. It just requires an external hard drive. And then consider using OneDrive or any of the equivalents to OneDrive for off-site storage by, to back up your work in progress to the cloud. But the bottom line here is that the image backup software referred to as the Windows 7 backup in Windows 10 and Windows 11 is not something you should be investing anymore in. For updates, for comments, for links related to this topic and more, visit askleo.com slash 155457. I'm Leo Notenboom and this is askleo.com. Thanks for watching.